um, so there there have been questions about habitat and yeah. food and you know how okay food we should definitely talk about a bit yeah um, so, so I was thinking since yeah you know uh, guy that's your, your territory your ecology yeah. right. background maybe you could address like how does the you know the carbon release and the methane release and the temperature rise how does that affect our access to food and the dying trees and all that other stuff I've been hearing since the mid 1980s mm -hmm. that increased carbon atmospheric carbon dioxide levels are good because it fertilizes the plants and you see in greenhouses where the carbon dioxide levels are very high that the plants are green and thriving and that's fine if you hold everything else constant but in fact we're running this experiment at the planetary level and we aren't holding everything else constant we're increasing carbon dioxide and a handful of other greenhouse gases and that's contributing to global average temperature rise that's contributing to increased acidification of the ocean and Paul already mentioned that the carbon dioxide gets taken out of the atmosphere all rain is actually acid rain all rain is acidic because it picks up some carbon dioxide on its way down and so by acidifying the ocean we're seeing coral bleaching we're seeing habitat being lost for phytoplankton the base of the marine food web without without a significant number of phytoplankton we're in real trouble in terms of a primary food source for humans and other organisms already we've lost about 50 percent of the plankton from the ocean in the last few decades at 0.85 C warming. If we get to 2 or 3 or 4 C warming in a relatively short period of time, I just don't see us having a significant number of phytoplankton. And, and for all practical purposes, it's a far different ocean than we had 20 years ago, too. It's been overfished, and the habitat has been altered. A few years ago, about a decade ago, when I was working on a, on a book, so I was up on statistics like this, the second largest deep sea fishing fleet in the world dragged all the protein off the bottom of the seafloor. It was run by Tyson, the chicken company. And they used all that protein to feed their chickens, you know, indicating there's an interaction between what we do to the oceans and how we actually eat. In addition, when we see, we're already seeing tremendous temperature swings. We've talked about that a little bit tonight this meandering jet stream and these temperature anomalies that are really high and really low and are affecting infrastructure, they're also affecting plants. Plants just are unable to adapt quickly enough to deal with those kinds of temperature changes. So again, if we see two, three, four degrees C temperature rise in a short period of time, and I'm, and I'm talking about uh, whether it's 10 years or 50 years, it's a short period of time. Plants cannot adapt that fast. So we're going, to, we're going to denature the proteins of a whole lot of land plants by raising the temperature to 125, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then, then all the plants die. All the land plants. We're in real trouble. And, and cold temperatures are detrimental to long-lived plants as well. Two of the last five years in Tucson, Arizona, where I lived for many years, temperatures were low enough to kill 80 to 100-year-old citrus trees in large numbers. So. We're animals. We're human animals. And like every other animal, we need habitat to survive, and that habitat must include food, and water, and air, and so on. But food is already being significantly affected by climate change, by, and by extreme weather events associated with climate change. And when continuing down this road, those events are going to be far more catastrophic in the future.